On the show, we have Netflix reality star from the hit show Love is Blind, Danielle Rule. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of learning to distance yourself from people whose words never seem to match their actions. The reality is we've all come across those people who are constantly talking about what they're going to do, but yet, when push comes to shove, they never do it. They talk about their big dreams, goals, or even make promises to you in your friendship or relationship. But over time, it becomes evident that they talk more than they take action. Successful people walk their talk, and when they say they're going to do something, they not only mean it, they do it. They are committed to being a person of their word and sticking to their promise to themselves and others. Constantly procrastinating or making excuses as to why you can't do something, even when you know it will be beneficial, is a form of self-sabotage that if we don't recognize and stop it, becomes a long-term habit. Making your mission today to start doing everything you say you're going to do and sticking to your commitments, whether big or small. This will not only make you a person of your word that's reliable, but it will give you and the people around you the confidence that you are a person that walks their talk. As Tony Robbins quotes, I challenge you to make your life a masterpiece. I challenge you to join the ranks of those people who live what they teach, who walk their talk. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. I love that because it's, it's not easy putting yourself out there, especially on a reality show where the world is watching. So congratulations on just that, putting yourself out yeah. there and taking that leap because a lot of people would be afraid to do just that, right? I will explain the premise of the show for those who don't know. <laughs> um, it's funny because like I'll meet people out and they won't know. Um, they, like a lot of people don't know, you know, there's a lot of people do, a lot of people don't. And I'll try to describe it to them. And it's like, okay, so there's these things called pods and there are 15 girls and 15 guys and you speed date with these pods, you can't see them. And then every single day you like kind of rank who you're vibing with the most. And then it's based on an algorithm of uh, how people kind of rank you. Mm -hmm. And so every day it's narrowed down and every day you're spending more time with them. And on the last day you decide to either get engaged or not, essentially. Mm -hmm. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have Danielle Rule, who stars in season two of the hit Netflix reality dating show, Love is Blind. Danielle, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I am good. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited. Thanks for being here. I'm really excited to talk to you. Let's get into it. So, you know, most people know you from Love is Blind on Netflix. So for those people that aren't familiar with the show, tell us about it and also why you wanted to find love in such an unconventional way. <laughs> like you talk to a wall, you flirt with it, you have first back best. Wait, no, I'm kidding. Um, so I'll start with why I wanted to go on it. Um, it's, it's crazy because while I watched the first season, I was like, I wish this was a method that we could use more widespread, but there are so many different like stereotypes that I think it would be pretty difficult to happen in the real world today. But when it like, I was primarily dating on dating apps, it's actually really hard for me to approach men. Um, I don't know why, but it is. And so I would, I would, you know, judge people not only based on the way that they looked, but, oh, you know, this guy's way too into fitness. I won't buy it with him. Um, X, Y, and Z. And then I actually just started, you know, going on a lot more dates and I realized it's not about that. It's about the vibe that you have with someone when you do start communicating. Yeah. You can't go on a date with every single person on a dating app. And so I found it really difficult to, to actually develop relationships based on that and the people that I actually dated ended up being the people who I was like hesitant about. And that's when I realized like I'm going about things entirely wrong, but I don't know how to change that because it's hard to get to know someone's personality or their energy without actually meeting them. Mm -hmm. So getting this opportunity, 
I was like, oh my gosh, this is like exactly what I wish that I could do in the real world. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I actually did have a really good feeling that it would work for me because of that. Um, yeah. At least me yeah. like really falling in love with someone. I didn't know if they were gonna fall in love with me back, but in a sense it worked. I love that because it's, it's not easy putting yourself out there, especially on a reality show where the world is watching. So congratulations on just that, putting yourself out yeah. there and taking that leap because a lot of people would be afraid to do just that, right? I will explain the premise of the show for those who don't know. <laughs> Um, it's funny because like I'll meet people out and they won't know um, they, like a lot of people don't know what you know there's a lot of people do a lot of people don't and I'll try to describe it to them and it's like okay so there's these things called pods and there are 15 girls and 15 guys and you speed date with these pods you can't see them and then every single day you like kind of rank who you're vibing with the most and then it's based on an algorithm of uh, how people kind of rank you. Mm -hmm. And so every day it's narrowed down and every day you're spending more time with them. And on the last day you decide to either get engaged or not, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I loved watching the pod conversations. I felt it was very intimate and you're kind of, as a viewer, you get to listen in, which is, which is amazing. Yeah. But was it easier to open up not seeing the person or was it more difficult? Are you more conscious about what you're saying? How was it for you? So it was so much easier. I think one, because you almost are talking to a wall and there is a person behind it, but it kind of takes away some of the hesitations that you might have speaking to someone in it, you know, right away. Two, you know that they're also in it for potentially marriage. And so you don't have to be scared of oversharing because if you're gonna get engaged to someone, they should know everything about you before you take that step. And both Nick and I took it very seriously. And so I know like our pod time wasn't necessarily aired that much, but the things that we talked about were very deep. And that's why we did feel so confident about one another. And on top of that, it's weird, but you don't see facial expressions. You don't see body language. And so if I were to open up about something and someone might be like, you know, um, you don't see that. So you can keep going without thinking twice about it because all you hear is their reaction. And the reactions sometimes are overwhelmingly positive, you know, and you can't, you can't see whether or not like there is like a, oh, that's sad or like, oh, I don't know how I feel about that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know what? It's all about energy with the friendships, yeah. love. It's all about energy and connection. There are some people you vibe with. There are some people that you don't. There are some yep. people that you think you won't vibe with and you do. So, I mean, it's all energy, right? So, yeah. so I, I, I like the premise of the show for that reason. And one thing I really do like is that even though some relationships didn't work, the cast is so united. Uh, you know, everyone's friends and they seem very united. So let's talk about the bonds. I know you're, you have a strong bond with all the girls. Yeah. I mean, even before we developed really close relationships, going on, you know, a dating reality TV show, it's very anxiety inducing because you don't know how the other people are going to be, if there's gonna be like, you know, cattiness or, you know, fights and things of that nature. And there really weren't between the most of us. And I think some of the ways that we were feeling post show, um, no one else can relate to that. Mm -hmm. And having them to lean on not only like after the show aired to talk about our experiences filming, but also our the anticipation for the show airing, how we felt after the show aired, what it's like to have your you know life changed overnight. So that was something that we really, really clicked on early on. And then, you know, there were a lot of hardships and um, heartbreaks. And I think that only made us grow stronger because again, like, and I love my friends and I love my family and I'm super close with them but it is impossible for anyone else to kind of grasp it because these are like real relationships. These are real feelings that we have and they're also in the public eye. So mm -hmm. it's like trying to navigate all of that. A lot of people, you know, will be like, yeah, but you know, you have this and you have this and you have this and no one can like truly understand how hard it feels to have every single thing under a microscope when you're already feeling a certain way. And so, that's, I think, like brought us even closer and like they're family now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, going through something like that with your friends as well. It's I guess you guys are really united after that. I, and I love that. I love to see that you guys support each other, that you guys have a strong bond. It's really nice to see on social media. And, you know, I want to talk about on the show. I know you had a big weight loss journey and you also talk about having 
um, struggling with body issues. So I think that's a really important topic because so many people feel that way and it's not really discussed in the media or in life, you know, people just struggle internally. So how did you, what triggered that and how did you get through it personally? Yeah, so one of the things that I recognized that it wasn't just my appearance that was causing me to have a little bit of self-loathing, it was also the fact that I kept trying and starting and trying and starting and I thought I was like, you know, doing my best at it and nothing would work and I kept feeling defeated. And one thing that I didn't necessarily communicate on the show is that my sophomore year of college, I joined a sorority and everyone was beautiful and, and thin and I actually did develop an eating disorder that year and I lost 50 pounds really quickly. And obviously that's not a sustainable way to lose weight. And so throughout college, it just continued to subtly increase. And then my first job post-college, there was just food everywhere. And so I, you know, was just impulsively snacking and eating. And there was a point where I got to my heaviest and I just felt so disappointed in myself. Cause I was like, how did you lose 50 pounds and feel this way about yourself just to let you get back to it? And I'm like, now looking back, it's like, because you were, you know, the way that you were feeling mentally triggered you into having this, you know, mm -hmm. I just wasn't eating. And that's when, um, after college I was like, I need to find a way to actually do this in a sustainable way because there are people who, you know, might not care about their weight. And unfortunately it was something that I obsessed over mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and you know, like, so that's the thing. It's like, I, I'm not saying you have to be skinny to be happy. But for me, it was something again that where I just like felt defeated and I felt like I was incapable of having um, self-control and things of that nature. And so that's why I did a weight loss program that helped me really um, stick to something. And I needed that. I needed that structure. I needed accountability. And that's why I did ultimately lose seven, 70 pounds and I was able to keep it off because of that. But being bullied, like, for almost your entire life because of your weight, like I can still remember to this day, the first time someone called me fat. And that that does kind of stick with you and feeling judged about your weight, even though people might not have been judging me, I was the one judging myself. Mm -hmm. And kids are mean, but like no one called me that in college, no one called me that at work, but I still felt like people were thinking that in their brain, even though they weren't. And cause I, so I was the only one thinking about it. So I was like projecting the way that I felt about myself onto other people and just obsessed about losing weight. And because I know that mindset, because I've been in a space where I was heavier, I lost it in an unhealthy way. I gained it all back. There are a lot of things that go, like, there's a lot of like mental health things that kind of go about, you know, the ups and downs of that and now being where I'm at today and being able to keep it off and focusing now on self-worth outside of weight too, which is like the past year. That's why I like to communicate about it because there's a lot of people who think they can never do it. And I'm like, I thought the same thing my entire life yeah. and I did. Yeah. And that's why I try to communicate about it. Like you don't have to lose weight and that's fine. Like if you don't want to, by all means, good for you. But like, if you do, here's how I did it and here's how it impacted my psych. And you know, like I just, my main goal in life is to try and make people feel not alone. And I think now with the community that I've built across, you know, social media, the people who stick with me are the ones who relate and it just is so gratifying. Yeah, absolutely. I like that you said that you were, you're looking for self-worth outside of weight too, because I think a lot of times it's also a mental thing where we think, um, yeah. you know, we're, we're our own worst critics, right? Sometimes even if we could look perfect and to others, but sometimes it's, it's our own perception of ourselves, right? Yep. Sometimes we, we self-loathe and it's caused by ourselves. I think, I, I like that you touch base on that because I think that's such an important topic that a lot of people, I mean, most people feel like that, especially women, and it's just not discussed. So I like that you're yep. shedding topics on things like this because it's important and it's needed. So I, I like that. And you also are discussing mental health, which is another, such an important topic um, because, you know, especially with the pandemic, a lot of people, it brought to light a lot of issues. So let, let's talk about mental health. Let's talk about um, your uh, journey with it and also how you're using your platform to inspire and talk about these topics. That's like, again, like the, the most gratifying thing of this entire experience was being able to vocalize this. And part of the reason that I do is because 
the first time I started having suicidal ideations, I was eight. And I was like, I didn't know why. Like, I again, like, I didn't know the definition of um, anxiety, depression. It's not taught at a younger age. And I wish to God that it was because there are so many kids and I connect with parents who are like, you know what, you convinced me to take my son to therapy. And that's like, I'm like, the fact that there are parents who are listening to my story and understanding that you can feel a certain way without having, you know, a terrible childhood. Like sometimes it just happens. And I, that also contributed to my self-loathing because I felt a certain way about myself that I didn't think other people felt like. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't shake it no matter how much I wanted to or how many good things were happening in my life until I finally started talking with other people about it. And that was the first time that I truly accepted it I didn't feel bad about myself because of it, because I realized it's something that so many other people go through. And once I did that and started therapy, when I would be having conversations with friends, you know, they might not have like necessarily understood why they were feeling the certain way that they did. And so I like, I think sometimes like if you experience pain, at least for me, I want to make sure I do everything humanly possible to make sure that no one else has to feel that. And that's why like with all of my friends, I've always been incredibly open once I fully understood, um, you know, and I still don't fully understand, but once I like had a better understanding as to why I felt the way that I did and now being able to do that on a broader scale, um, it's, it's so beneficial. Um, But again, I think it stems from knowing what it feels like to not be understood or not even understanding myself and then just speaking about my experience to try and help people that did relate to what they saw on the show or relate to the things that I post on social media. Yeah, and I think that's why people relate to you as well and you're a fan favorite is because, you know, you can feel that vulnerability and when people talk about these things, you know, most, all of us go through the same kind of issues for the most part, we all struggle. And sometimes when you just are, you talk about it, you realize that there are a lot more people going through it than you think, right? You're not alone in it. One thing that I I definitely want to get the point across on, because this is something that I battled with and that, you know, I relate relate to a lot of people who battle with the same thing is you don't have to have something significant happen to you in order to have depression, anxiety, X, Y, and Z. And there are a lot of people who reach out and they're like, I feel this way, but nothing bad has happened. You know, I have a happy life and a lot of people feel worse because they're comparing their past experiences to other people and feel like they don't deserve to feel the way that they feel. And I felt that growing up. And that only kind of has a snowball effect of the self-loathing that you can't shake it because sometimes you don't feel feel like you deserve to Mm. have those feelings in in a sense. Um, So that's another thing that I want to make sure I communicate. It's like never compare yourself to other people. If you're feeling a certain way, you're feeling a certain way and you don't have to feel bad about it. You don't have to think that you don't quote unquote deserve it. You're just feeling that way and and just ride the wave and work on it. Yeah, I I can relate to that. I think that, you know, feeling worthy of things sometimes, whether it's success, whether it's love, it's one mm -hmm. of those things that a lot of us struggle with is, is just feeling worthy. Right. And sometimes just realizing that you are worth it and that you are worthy of great things. I know I have an affirmation that I say every morning and I say, I'm worthy of all the great things life has to offer. And sometimes even if I don't feel like that, I I read that quote or that affirmation and it makes me feel better. It sets my whole day because, you know, I kind of affirm that to myself. So sometimes it's it's just, you know, feeling worthy, which is something that I think is um, we kind of all go through. So I, I like that you talked about that. And I, I know that you're using music, you're writing music to help you, um, mm-hmm. you know, get through some tough times and as a form of therapy. So let's talk about that. Yeah. So that's another thing is that I started writing at a very, again, a very young age. And I remember I was sitting on an airplane and this is a little deep, but I just couldn't shake the feeling. And again, there was nothing necessarily going on in my life. And I was like looking outside the window and I was like, would it be easier to just give up or continue onward with the pain that I'm experiencing? And I looked over to my sister who was sitting in the middle seat of the plane. And I was like, Danielle, snap out of it. There are so many amazing reasons to live. And so that's when I actually wrote, and I always journaled, but a lot of the times I think metaphorically, so I wrote it in the form of a song. My sister still calls it the, oh, the airplane song? I'm like, yes. <laughs> um, and so for one, I, again, like 
I journal, I think metaphorically, so I songwrite. And I shared some of my lyrics with the people who follow me and they were like, how can I listen to this? Where is this? Um, because even though I wrote it so young, people did resonate. And that's one of the reasons that I continue onward because some of the things that people relate to me on, I've already written about. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I love music. And regardless of whether or not I'm going to become some professional musician, like that is one of my outlets that I love. Cooking, face, you know, like there are so many things that give me joy and music is the number one thing. And so spending time recording, like working with the producers, it's just so fun. Mm -hmm. And I forget, it's just like, I've been in such a better mindset since doing that. And it's like, you can hate my songs, you can love my songs. It's helping me, that's all that matters. But there have been multiple people who also have said, I have your song on repeat. Um, I haven't stopped listening to anything. I listened to it, cried, and had to redo my makeup, which is very sad. But <laughs> it's just like people like I relate to it so much that it has helped me, and that's what made me want to like continue doing it. Is is because hearing that like words or my past experiences help other people is still something that's so mind blowing to me. But the greatest thing like in the entire world. Ooh, I want to hear your music. <laughs> there's more to come. Yeah, there's more to come. <laughs> that's great I, I like that you're using you know your own experiences to write music and that you're using it's inspiring other people too you know your own journey is, is inspiring people so I love that and I think that's um, I'm really excited I'm gonna actually right after the segment I'm gonna go yeah. listen to your music <laughs> so the one that I have uh, so th there's a second one that's going to be done soon the first song is called the way down and again I wrote this when I was 15 I wasn't by any means a professional songwriter but it is about um, the ups and downs about giving up and ultimately why it shouldn't be an option. And that's why it was the first song that I released because a lot of people who are either at that age or felt that way at that age, um, they related to it. And I'm going to release songs that are kind of like in the order of my own um, personal growth. So the second one is kind of me realizing that I do have a lot of up and down emotions and sometimes that can cause me to feel misunderstood, but I'm the one who's trying to mask how I appear in public settings to have everyone think that I'm this confident. I am outgoing and there are times where I'm confident, but there's times where I just want to hide inside. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of my up and down emotions about like, I'm feeling this today, but I go out and I'm going to act like this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like no one's understanding that I'm actually depressed, but I'm, I'm the one that's like expressing such a multitude of different emotions that, you know, and so like, that's another thing where it's like, it, it's just, that's why I call it excerpts for my journal is because it genuinely is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like that you're using it to, as a form of therapy and to get your feelings yeah. out. I think that's really important, uh, you know, just to focus on things that make you feel good okay. too, and that you could, uh, you know, share with others. So I like that. You know, Danielle, I created my platform to inspire, to uplift. So I want to ask you for, you know, any of our viewers going through a hard time in their life, maybe they're going through a heartbreak, maybe they're, you know, not where they are. Uh, where they want to be in their career, what would you say to inspire and uplift them? And that's like something that, you know, I'm going through now and that I've gone through my entire life. There are certain times like, you know, I, I have PTSD. There are certain things that happened in my past where I'm like, why me? Why me? Why me? And sometimes it can take months. Sometimes it can take years. And you have that aha moment where it's like, I've grown from that so much. And again, like it takes a long time and it takes a lot of patience and it takes a lot of work, but not, not giving up and being patient with yourself and forgiving yourself is so important. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Not giving up. I think that's the, yeah. the key word it's, is not giving up. There's always a light and sometimes it's impossible to see that light, but without darkness, you wouldn't even know what light is. And I think that's one thing that is important to think about because I do communicate with people who are like, there's there's nothing going for me. I'm like, well, this is going to change you in a way that you're not going to ever imagine, but it will because the harder times that I went through made me a 10 times better person. And again, in the moment you're, you don't realize that it, it but, but I truly believe that. Absolutely. I like that you said that, you know, some in order sometimes to, 
to be happy, you have to be sad at some point. You won't know the difference. Like you have to go through the hard times to to really grow and become the person you're meant to be. I know even for me in my own life, some of the biggest challenges that I ever went through were things that, you know, brought me to where I am now. If I didn't go through those things, I don't know if I would be here now. Um, nice. So sometimes it's it, we need to go through those challenges. And, and it, if you think about it, life would be boring if we had no challenges at all. Imagine life was perfect all the time. It, it wouldn't be fun, right? It, you have to go through the ups and downs in order to really appreciate the good times. So mm -hmm. I like that you said that. And even just like for a, uh, like a more recent example, like after going on the show, the initial thing that happened is I was like being very, very um, kind of bullied for my mental health. And at first I was just like, I didn't see the light in that. I'm like, oh my God, this is like the hardest thing is that something so personal and something that I'm constantly working on is now being under attack. And that one allowed me to have the platform that I do. Two, it really did hype, like make me hyper focus on the things that I wanted to work on. And I'm in the best spot today that I've been in a long time. And I did have to go through that to be like, you know what? There are things that you have to work on, but also you can do that journey alongside other people who have things to work on as well. Um, and so even just that experience, you know, was really, really tough at first, but now I'm like, it's a good thing that that happened. Yeah, and I can tell, I see you're in a better place. I can see that it's helped you find your calling and what you're really passionate about, right? Like it, it made you find your voice. So I, I can see that and I can tell that it's, it's um, you know, it's been a challenging journey, but good. And I, it's nice to see you happy. And I like that you're using your platform to, you know, shed light on these important topics because, you know, people need to hear it. And I think that they're really appreciating your content. I know I do. Um, I'm a big fan of yours as well, and um, yeah, I like your content, so keep it, keep going. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it means so much, and, and that's the thing is, I never wanted to necessarily be an influencer, and some of the girls make fun of me because I have no idea what I'm doing in terms <laughs> of aesthetically pleasing content, but the, like, all I care about is, like, the connection that I have with the people who do relate, and that's the only reason that I want to continue having a platform no matter how big or small is because I have seen like people that have said like that I've changed their lives. I'm like me, <laughs> like I'm just some normal girl working in marketing in Chicago. Yeah. But now I'm like, okay, I'm going to continue this because my transparency is helping one other people be transparent and also learn, you know, so I will never stop. Don't mm -hmm. worry. I, I see a book in your future. <laughs> yeah. You definitely need to have a book or something. But Danielle, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's been a pleasure to speak with you. Um, I look forward to hearing your future projects. What else are you working on right now? So that's it. I have like, I'm a, I work in a creative um, job. And so I tend to, again, like think creatively. So one of the things is I am going to continue um, writing songs, releasing them and you know, just as, again, it's therapy for me and the other people who relate to them. So that's something I'm super excited about. And I am um, going to start a YouTube channel um, that's going to be a little bit more lighthearted, where it just talks about um, different experiences that people go through in relationships or at work where they're like, am I the one that's wrong here? Are you wrong? Like, <laughs> and so it's just gonna be really funny. It's gonna feature some of my friends and um, I'm excited about that one too because it's a little bit more lighthearted, but it's also relatable in the sense where I told like one specific example on an Instagram Live and they're like, even that makes us not feel alone. <laughs> and so it's another thing I'm excited about even though it's not as, you know, deep, you know, but it's still like, that's my goal. Very nice. Well, we look forward to seeing your content. Come back on the show anytime and yeah, that keep up the great work. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, this is great. I'll come back anytime. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live on YouTube and Facebook. You can fly higher than the sky.